This is part 60 of AngularCRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss performing delete operation in Angular. To set the expectations right, we'll be deleting data only on the client side. We'll discuss deleting data from a database table in our upcoming videos when we implement the server-side service. Now, if we take a look at the project that we've been working with so far in this video series, when we click delete button, nothing happens. What we want to do is delete the respective employee when this button is clicked. So the first step here is to include delete method within our employee service. Let's call the method delete employee. And to this method, we are going to pass the ID of the employee that we want to delete. Now we know this array right here has all of our employee objects. The first thing that I'm going to do is find the index of the employee object in that array that we want to delete. And for that, we are going to use find index method. So this dot list employees, which is our array. On that, let's call find index method given an employee object. The ID of the employee object must be equal to the incoming ID. So this is going to give us the index of the employee object that we want to delete. Let's store it in a constant. If the index is not equal to minus one, meaning we have found the employee object that we want to delete. Now, the easiest way to remove an element from an array is by using array splice method. And this method has got two parameters. The first parameter is the index of the element that we want to remove from the array. Now, we already have that index in this constant i. So let's pass that as the first parameter. And the second parameter specifies the number of elements that we want to remove. In our case, we want to remove just one element. So I'm going to pass one. Next, let's wire up click event handler for delete button. We know this delete button is within our display employee component. So within the view template of our display employee component, let's include click event handler. When the button is clicked, we want to call a method delete employee. We don't have this method yet, so let's create it within the component class. Let's copy the name of the method first. And within our component class, let's create the method. Now to be able to delete the employee, we need employee service. So let's inject it using the constructor. Now let's use the injected employee service and call delete employee method. To this method, we need to pass the ID of the employee that we want to delete. Now, if we look at this component, notice the employee object is coming into this component as an input parameter. So let's use that object and retrieve its ID. Notice now when we click delete button, the respective employee object is deleted. As you already know, we are only deleting the employee objects on the client side. This means when we reload the application, we get all the three employee objects back. There we go. Now the delete operation does not work as expected if we filter this employee list by typing in the search by name text box. Let's search for John. Notice when I click delete button, it appears as if nothing has happened. Behind the scenes, it actually deleted John from our employee service but it didn't update the UI. We'll understand the reason for that in just a bit. But notice when I remove the filter within our list, we don't have John anymore. Now the same happens if I type again MA. So the filter text is MA. So we see both Mark and Mary. When I click on Mark again, it appears as if nothing happened. And the same is true when I click this delete button here. Now when I remove this search term here, Notice the list is empty. Let's understand what's causing this behavior. Before that, let's reload our page so we get all the three employees back. This employee list is coming from our list employees component. So if we take a look at its view template, notice the view template is binding to this property, filtered employees. We have this property within our component class right here. Now when the component is first constructed, its constructor is called. And the first thing that we are doing here is retrieving the list of employees from our route resolver. And we are storing that list in this property. 
this dot employees. So this employees property is holding a reference to the array we have in our employee service. And now look at this if else block. So we are checking if there is a value for search term. We'll come to what's happening inside if in just a bit. First, let's look at the else part. So if we don't have a search term, then we are setting filtered employees property to this dot employees. So now filtered employees property is holding a reference to the array that we have in our employee service. And when we click this delete button, this respective employee object is deleted from the array in employee service. And this filtered employees property is holding a reference to that array within that employee service. So when the employee object is deleted, the UI is automatically updated because our list employees component view template is bound to that filtered employees property which has a reference to the employees array within our employee service. That's why it works when we don't have anything typed in the search by name text box. Notice now we don't have anything typed. When I click delete button, mark employee object immediately disappears from the list. Now let's understand why it's not working if we have something typed in the search by name text box. So if we take a look at the if block within our list employees component, notice we are checking for search term query parameter. If we have that query parameter, we are retrieving its value and assigning that to this search term property. And we have the setter for the search term property right here. Now, if we look at our URL right here, we don't have that search term query parameter. So the setter wouldn't be called. But one important point to keep in mind is the setter is not only called when there is search term query parameter. Anytime we type into this text box, this setter is automatically called. That's because the text box is bound to this search term property. And notice what's happening inside this setter. We are filtering the employees by calling filter employees method right here. If we take a look at the logic inside this method, notice we are using the array filter method to filter the list of employees. The important point to keep in mind is this filter method returns a new array which contains the filtered list of employees. So this property right now is pointing to that filtered array. It's no longer pointing to the array within our employee service. But keep in mind, when we click the delete button, we are deleting that respective employee object from the array we have in employee service, not the array this filtered employees property is pointing to. So that's why the UI is not updated. To have the UI updated, we'll also have to delete that respective employee object from the filtered array to which this filtered employees property is pointing to. But the problem here is the delete button is present within our child component display employee component. And this property filtered employees is present within the parent component list employees component. So when we delete an employee object from the employee service, we will have to signal from the child component to the parent component list employees component. So this component can also delete that respective employee object from the filtered employees array. Remember, one way to communicate from child component to parent component is by using output properties. We discussed output properties in detail in part 22 of Angular 2 tutorial and part 37 of this Angular CRUD tutorial. So within our child component, display employee component, Let's create an output property. Let's name it notify delete. And to create an output property, we use event emitter. Notice it imported event emitter from protractor. We actually want to have it imported from Angular core. So let's remove this import statement. Now we are using this notify delete event to notify list employees component about the employee object that we have just deleted. And to tell which employee object we have deleted, we are going to pass the ID of the employee. And the ID of the employee is number. So the event data is going to be of type number. We don't have output imported. So let's import output. Now we need to raise this notify delete event when the employee object is deleted. So within our delete employee method, 
after the employee object is deleted, let's raise notify delete event by using the emit method. And remember, when this event is raised, we also want to pass the ID of the employee object that we have deleted. So this completes the change required in our child component, display employee component. Now let's bind to this notify delete event from our parent component, list employees component. So here is our child component. The event that we want to bind to is notify delete. And when this event is raised, we want to call a method. Let's call it on delete notification. Let's actually bring this to the next line so we can see everything. And let's pass the event data. To pass event data, we use dollar event. And remember, event data is nothing but the ID of the employee object that we have deleted within our child component. We don't have this on delete notification method within our component class, so let's create that now. And this method is going to receive the ID of the employee object that we have deleted which is a number. Now the implementation of this is very similar to the implementation we have in our employee service delete employee method. So let's go there and copy the logic and paste it within our list employees component. Now we want to delete that respective employee from the filtered employees array. So since we are also deleting the employee from the filtered employees array, the UI should be automatically updated even when we have a search term typed in this search by name text box. Let's type John and when we click delete, notice the UI is automatically updated. When we remove the search term, the rest of the employees are displayed. Now let's understand how all this is working. Within our child component, display employee component, we have the code to delete employee object from the array that we have in our employee service. But when we have a search text typed in this search by name text box, this UI is bound to another filtered array. And that filtered array is present within the parent component list employees component. So we will have to notify this parent component about the employee object that we have deleted. For that, we created notify delete event within our child component and we are emitting that event passing it the ID of the employee object that we have deleted. Within our parent component, list employees component, we are binding to the notify delete event and then deleting that same employee from the filtered employees array so the UI is updated even when we have the search term typed in search by name text box. At the moment, when we click delete button, the respective employee record is immediately deleted. Delete operation is something that we cannot undo. So it's always better if we display a confirmation. So when we click this button, we want to display, are you sure you want to delete with yes and no buttons. When I click no, the record should not be deleted. When I click yes, the record should be deleted. So within our display employee component, we just got this delete button. I'm going to include a property. Let's call it confirm delete and I'm going to initialize it to false. This is a Boolean property. We are going to use it in the view template to show and hide delete confirmation. Now in the view template, right next to the edit button, I'm going to include a span element. And inside this span element, I'm going to include another span element and this is going to display the confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete? And then we need two buttons. So let's make two copies of this delete button. The text on the second button is no. On the first button it is yes. When we click this yes button, it's actually going to delete the employee record. So let's leave this bootstrap btn-danger class which is going to give us that red color. And when we click this no button, it's not going to delete the employee record. So let's use btn dash primary CSS class, which gives us that blue color. Now let's save our changes and see what we've got so far. Notice we have the confirmation text, yes and no buttons, and the actual delete button displayed. On the initial page load, we don't want this confirmation text, yes and no buttons to be displayed. We want them to be displayed only when we click this delete button. 
So on the initial page load, we want to keep this entire span hidden. So the confirmation text and these two buttons. So on this span element, let's use NGF structural directive. And let's bind this to our boolean property in the component class confirm delete. Now this delete button should be displayed on the initial page load, but when we click this button, then this button should be hidden and it should display this pan which has got the confirmation text and these two buttons. So in a nutshell, this pan element and this button element should be mutually exclusive, meaning when this pan element is visible, then this button should not be visible. If this pan element is not visible, then this button should be visible. So to make them mutually exclusive, I'm going to bind it to the same property even on this button, but we're going to use the not operator here. So the visibility becomes mutually exclusive. Now when this delete button is clicked, we do not want to actually delete the employee by calling delete employee method. When this button is clicked, we simply want to display this delete confirmation span. Are you sure you want to delete SN no buttons? For this span to show up, we have to change the value in this property to true. And that's what we will do when we click this button. So on the button click, let's set confirm delete property to true. Let's format this code so we can see it better. Now when this delete confirmation is displayed and when we click no button, we want to hide this confirmation span and then display this delete button. So for that to happen, we need to set this confirm delete property to false. When we set this property to false, this span will be hidden and the delete button will be displayed again. So let's do that on click of the no button. Confirm delete equals false. Notice on the initial page load, we have delete button displayed. When I click that, we have the confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes and no. When I click no, the confirmation disappears and we see the delete button again. When we click yes, the record will be deleted. To delete an employee, first implement a method in our employee service which removes the employee object from list employees array. The easiest way to remove an element from an array is by using the array splice method. Next, within our display employee component, make these changes. In the component class, create this confirm delete boolean property and initialize it to false. We're using this property in the view template to control the visibility of the delete confirmation. Within this delete confirmation, when we click the yes button, that's when we are calling the delete employee method, which actually deletes that employee. Notice within this delete method, we are doing two things. First, we are deleting the employee object from the array in our employee service. And then we are emitting our custom event, notify delete. Along with the event, we are passing the ID of the employee object that we have just deleted as event data. We are using this custom event, notify delete, to pass the ID of the employee object that we have just deleted from this display employee component to its parent component, list employees component. Within this list employees component, we are binding to that custom event notify delete. And notice within the event handler method, we are deleting that same employee from filtered employees array to which our list employees component view template is bound. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.